been changed, not so much as a Mary. me to collect you next week then would you mrs haynes you don't listen do you you're all the same you do good as so busy imitating the angels you just don't listen good night angela thank you for all your help my pleasure mrs haynes my pleasure you've been in here again haven't you you've been in here you break my front door and you are paying for it. Here you are. Here's the milk. I think because you get old, you get stupid. But they're not having what's mine. They're not having it. I might have a word. Yeah, certainly. Mr. Um... Bright. Mr. Bright. 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 Yes, Mr. Bright? This is very embarrassing, Mr. Frost, and I do hope you won't take it amiss. No? Oh, yes. What's that, Mr. Bright? Well, not to put too fine a point on it, it's your back garden. I mean, I know we're only very recent newcomers to the neighbourhood, and I fully appreciate that you're a very busy man. Well, you would be in your line of business, but... It really isn't very nice to look out of a bedroom window and... Yeah, I know, absolutely. You're quite right. Uh, I'll get something done about it, Mr Bright. That's very civil of you. Oh, just I was wanting to have a word with you anyway. Oh, yes, why's that? Could you give me a push? Someone breaks in and takes the only bit of money she's got. And what do you people do about it, eh? Nothing. All she gets is a follow-up visit from some stupid cow who says, is she all right and would she like a cup of tea? Just look at the state of her. She's terrified to go to bed at night. Do something, all right? Do something. Don't waste your time. They're useless. How about this pornography business? Oh, we're very near. By the end of the week, I'll be giving them a pull. Jack! Have you got a minute? Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? How well, about these old-age pensioners that are getting turned over? No, no, no. Senior citizens, please. I see there was another one two nights ago. Yes, that's right, sir. Little old lady living on her own. Someone broke in, took about 80 quid in used fibres. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that would be the 16th such break-in in three weeks. Oh, I haven't kept count, but you're probably right, sir. As it happens, I'm exactly right. Sixteen elderly ladies, most of them robbed of their life savings. What are we doing about it? What the hell can we do about it? He doesn't leave any forensic, and no one's ever seen him. I mean, it wasn't so bad if he was taking jewellery, you know, and trying to flog it. I might get a whisper, but he doesn't. He takes bits and pieces. He concentrates on cash. What about the blue van? Oh, oh yeah, yes, that's right. The famous blue van. Well, it's something for you to go on, isn't it? Yes, sir. In 16 burglaries, two people, two Mark you, said they thought they saw a blue van parked nearby. The first one said it was definitely a small blue van. The other one said it was a big van, probably blue, but couldn't be certain. Yeah, well, it's a lead, Jack, of a sort. Which presumably you're following up. Yes, sir, but do you realise how many blue vans there are in the Denton area alone? It doesn't matter how many they are. We have a computer. It can churn out the information in seconds. Yes, sir, we have, and it's already done that. But what it can't do, it can't go round knocking on doors, asking bloody stupid questions. That comes down to PC plod, and that takes time, and that comes out of your budget, sir. 
Now, if there's nothing else, my sausage sandwich is congealing. No? Good. Thank you. Are you happy with that sort of negative attitude, Jim? <laughs> Don't you get in? Oh, don't start. Just don't start. Why don't you come to bed? Because I fell asleep down here, all right? Look at the state of you. Yeah, well. Her milk's still out. Hmm? Next door. Her milk's still out. And I could hear her cat behind the door like it's trying to get out. I think I'll see if she's all right. I'll just leave it. Don't be silly, Dean. She's an old lady. I said leave it. You don't give a toss about anyone, do you? No, not about that old cow. I don't know. saying is take it easy. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Get right up my nose. No, make the effort, please. Yes, all right, all right, I'll try. Oh, and Jack, he's a little concerned about the way you're dressed. The way I want? Well, you know, your shirts and stuff. Oh, that's great, that is. So far today, I've had my garden, my attitude, now my shirt. Anything else while Jack! I'm... I know, don't tell me you don't like the way I park my car. Uh, another old girl's been turned over. This time he beat her up. Pretty badly, by all accounts. Everything in there? This one? Okay. This is where it happened, is it? They found her in this chair. They? Who are they? Couple next door. WPC Wallace is with them now. Yes, yes, I know us all. How do you mean chair? She was sitting in this chair. I see. So someone comes in and beats her face to pulp and she just sits there, does she? No, I'm saying that's how they found her. I don't suppose she put up much of a fight. She's 76 years old and crippled with arthritis. So a stick there, is it? Presumably, Gov. That's how you found it? Leaning against a chair like that? That's a handbag down there, is it? Like that, unopened? That's how we found it. State of her face, there must have been blood everywhere, but as you can see, the place is immaculate. No blood, no mess. Everything in its place. He must have tidied up after him. She come and tidied my place. Do we know what's missing, if anything? I had a careful look in her bag. A 
According to a pension book, she drew her money yesterday, but her purse was empty, apart from some bits and pieces of silver. Well, maybe she spent it. She obviously lives well. It's nearly a quid's worth of food in that fridge. Find out where she draws her pension. Check her pension book. See how much she drew out. Some of these old girls, you know, they leave it for a couple of weeks. Could be quite a bundle. It's already in hand. Thought it might be Sergeant. Just trying to impress you with my laser-like mind. What about jewellery? Nothing seems to have been disturbed, but again, we're checking. It's whether anybody knows. She's a widow, no family. Apart from the cat. Well, Sergeant, what do you reckon? Same bloke, do you think? I don't see it, Gov. No? Well, the way she was attacked, the way the place has been left, no forced entry. No, this is a one-off. Well, hopefully it's a one-off. Mm. Well, if they came in from next door, the chain must have been on. Maybe she hadn't put it on. Yeah, it's more like it, I suppose. Jack. Yes? Come on, tell me something wonderful. The lady across the road wants to speak to the man in charge. Oh, I see. Will I do? Number 37, Mrs. Barrett. All right. Go and see what you can find out next door, will you? Listen, I want a team knocking on all the doors. I want forensic giving us priority. And I want someone sitting by the old girl's bed night and day. And if I've forgotten anything, I want that done as well, all right? All right. Oh, yes. By the way, in order to keep Mr. Mullet happy, See if anyone's seen a blue van about, will you? Blue van? Yeah. 37, did you say? Yeah, number 37. Well, you've checked that out, but let's have a look at this. And then when I opened the door, and I saw her just sitting there with her face on. Anyway, um, and I ran out and I got Dean. And he came in and stayed with her. Then, well, I went across the road to find the ambulance. Ours had been cut off. I don't think about emergencies here, people, do they? That's all I know. And the chain, it wasn't on the door. I didn't know she had one, a chain. Well, I think that's all I need to know for now. Is she going to be all right? About a 50-50 chance, they reckon. How can someone do that? Yeah. I hate poking my nose in, but I thought it might be useful. I mean, the state of her. They were having a row. Old Mother Haynes and that young couple from next door. Well? My neighbours. Neighbours row all the time, don't they? Yes, but it was about her key. Eh? She keeps a spare key hidden in the front garden. Bloody daft, if you ask me. I mean, everybody knows where it is. But as far as I can make out, she'd come back, found it moved, and was accusing him of taking it. Well, if everybody knows about it, why pick on him? Well, they'd had some trouble before, you see. She'd accused him of going in and poking about while she was down at the hospital. I see. And is that likely? Oh, a bit of a layabout. <laughs> that girlfriend of his looked worried out of her mind. Still, I suppose she must have done something right or she wouldn't have stuck with him, would she? So, it was about five o'clock last night. About that. So you didn't see or hear anything after that? No. Not until this morning when I saw her go into the house. But not last night? No, I was out. My fancy man picked me up and we went for a ride in the car. Oh, your fancy man, eh? He only wants us to get engaged. Mark you, I couldn't marry him even if I wanted to. Oh? Why is that? Well, I lied to him, didn't I? And if we got married, he'd find out. Find out about what? I told him I was 67. And I'm really 68. Now, that is naughty. Oh, I know what they all think. Silly old cow with a blonde wig, painted fingernails, still running after a pair of trousers. 
You know, just because you get old, it doesn't mean to say you stop having feelings. It doesn't mean to say that you really don't want to reach out and feel a warm body lying next to you when you wake up in the morning. If you wake up in the morning. <laughs> not really with us. Mrs. Haynes, if I'm to get the hero that did this, I'm going to need your help. I need a description. If you understand me, just squeeze my hand. Why would he do this to her? I don't know, sir. Perhaps she caught him at it and he panicked or something. She was half crippled. She couldn't move. understand a lot of things I see in this job. Ain't that a fact, Constable? Ain't that a fact? Second thoughts, turn left. Got something urgent to do up the ice tree. She was a miserable old biddy by all accounts. I can't find anyone with a good word to say about her. Mind you, she was in a lot of pain with the arthritis. Yeah, she's in a bloody sight more pain now, isn't she? Yeah? Tell me something. When was her birthday? Uh, yeah, the October the 26th, 1917. Well, somebody must have liked her. They gave her a present. There was some gift wrapping paper in the bin in the kitchen. Well, that's useful, Gov. Trying to be funny, Sergeant. Me, Gov? No, Gov. I wasn't there. Right. She collected a pension from the sub-post office in Carthew Road. She was in there yesterday afternoon for the first time in three weeks. Three weeks' money. How much is that? 165 pounds, near enough. And mostly in new notes, so the bank will have a record. Gov? Yes? 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 Urgent message from fingerprints. They've got an identification. Dean Ronald Hoskins, age 24, three previous. Burglary, break and entering and assault with a knife. And Hoskins. And That's the bloke next door, isn't it? Do you want him boarding No, all right, hang on, hang on. No, of course we don't. We know he was in there because he was the one that found her, wasn't he? No, he said he found her. Well, if he's in it, so's his girlfriend. I wish someone would let me finish. All right, carry on, constable. And 
His fingerprints were all over the old girl's handbag. Good afternoon. Oi! Oi, where do you think you're going? You've got no bloody right! Just because he got a record? When was the last time he did anything, eh? Where are you going? What are you staring at? Oi, get out! Come in, my kid! I'm going to search the bloody cornflakes, are you? Get out! Bloody fascist bastards! Get behind with your payments, aren't you, love? Well, so bloody what? So we owe a few bob. Does that mean he's going to go and beat up some old lady? You are sick, you are. That's what you are. You're sick. No, you're just like me. Never pay till I get the red one. <laughs> Keep them waiting, eh? And for your information, Miss Reynolds, it's not because the light of your life here has got a record. It's because his fingerprints were found all over the old lady's handbag. Yeah, so I was in there. You know I was bloody in there. Yes, but I didn't know that you were poncing about with her handbag, did I? It was on the floor, right? I picked it up. What's wrong with that? Why were you touching her handbag in the first place? Hey? You heard, son. I said, what were you doing touching her handbag? Jack. So, one minute you're having a shouting match with her on the doorstep, the next minute you're going in to see if she's all right. How do you account for that? Oh, because she's a human being, which is more than you are, you smug cow. We're not standing for this, Dean. This is victimisation, this is. Can you tell me what this is doing in your airing cupboard, Mr Hoskins? It's my gyro money, so what? Oh. So you put it in the airing cupboard in case a little old lady breaks in and nicks it, is that it? Dean? Tell you so what, Mr. Hoskins. That little old lady withdrew her pension money yesterday, and they recorded all the numbers because they were new notes, just like these, Mr. Hoskins. So if those numbers and these numbers are the same, that's so what, Mr. Hoskins. Look, I swear to you, I never touched her. Then what's this all about? Look, gospel truth, all right? I never laid a finger on her. Kathy goes over the road, and I'm standing there. And I see her handbag, and it's like... It's open with her purse and everything. Look, I was going to pay her back, for Christ's sake. I mean, it's not as if she's going to need it, is she? Well, is she? Go, bastard! You lousy rock! Oh, dear. You've got a domestic. Sorted out. Come you to no. No, don't worry. I don't know what time I'll be about myself. No. No, no, don't do that. Look, why don't I get a takeaway? What do you fancy? The Chinese? Ah, oh, no, uh, look, don't tell me now. I'll, um, I'll give you a ring from the... Uh, and you can tell me then. OK, yeah. Look, I've got to go. Yeah. Bye. I'll give you a ring. Sorry, Gov. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, dear, I don't know. Look at this lot here. Every day it's the same. Well, what do you think about our friend Hoskins? Is he in the frame or not? Only as a sneak thief. I don't see him as a granny basher. No, neither do I. Still, he's the only one we've got in the frame, so we'd better keep hold of him. Keep him for a while, you know, make him sweat. Teach him a lesson. I didn't think... Didn't think what? I didn't think we were in the business of teaching lessons. and the old girl was beaten about their head with that walking stick. Blah, 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 blah. Wiped clean of all prints, etc. Traces of blood in the kitchen waste room. So he cleans it off and he leaves it resting against the chairs if nothing had happened. Apart from changing the shape of her face. Oh, what's this? Oh. Single piece of a jigsaw puzzle found wedged down the side of the chair. No jigsaw puzzle of any sort found in the house. So, it beats her up, 
But he doesn't take anything. As far as we know, he didn't no. take anything. Right, as far as we know. Which means what? He was either disturbed or he panicked. He couldn't find anything. But she didn't want anything in the first place. <sighs> All right. Come on. Hope you try. That's it. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, Gov. Don't fancy a drink, do you? Stuff from the laundrette. Oh What's the time now? No, it's all right, it's all right. Should be able to make it. I shall have to. I haven't got a clean shirt in the house. Oh, well, cheers. Cheers. Well, how am I doing? Go. How am I treating you? You just bought me a large G&T. I had a lecture from horn-rimmed Harry about how I should treat a female officer who was unfortunate enough to get herself posted as my bag man. Person. Bag person. You know, equality, harassment, all that stuff. Ah. Hmm. Actually, if the truth be known, I think that Mr. Mullet was hoping that you'd be the sort of woman that immediately I bought her a large gin and tonic would think I was trying to get into her knickers. I saw you buy George Toolan a Campari and soda the other night. I'd hate to think you were trying to get into his. How do you mean, hoping? Mr. Mullet? I was being indiscreet. You go. Can't believe that. Yes. Mr. Mullet and I share, I think, what's commonly known as a lack of understanding. Yes. Yes, I've heard about it. Mm. It's only my medal that keeps me afloat. Yes. I've heard about that, too. If I do find there's a problem, and it does happen, you know, then I'll tell you, not him. I'll drink to that. Is there Mr. Frost yet? Yes, here. Uh, telephone. <laughs> Frost. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to speak up. 10 Jubilee Street. Upstairs bedroom, the old girl's dead. Sergeant, up you go. There you are, you see, Sergeant. If you've been a bloke, all right, you keep your eyes open. Too. My saying, Gov, 
Don't you think breaking into someone's house on the say-so of an anonymous phone call is a bit of a liberty? Yes, you're quite right, Sergeant. I'm getting too bloody old for this sort of thing. Next time you wear a pair of trousers. For his own good. Look, she's been dead four weeks and he's still trying to feed her. He needs help. But that is precisely my point. Why are you arresting him? We're not arresting him. Oh. We're taking him into care because if we don't do that, he's going to be in an even worse state, just, isn't he? up from the laundrette, some bugger's gone and nicked it. Your stuff? Yes, all of it. That's what I call a desperate criminal. I had to call in to the market. Oh, you shop in style then. Look at this, look, look. Two shirts for a tenner. That can't be bad, can it? Quality gear, that. Yeah, I can feel. <laughs> look, hey, you... Where are they all off to then? Brighton. Lunch, theatre matinee, fish and chip tea. Not bad, eh? Oh, I'd rather be 18 and off to the palais. Right. Listen, while you're here, you wouldn't help me move this piano, would you? Yes, of course. Thanks. Where would you like it? Just up the back here, please. Right, OK. Thanks. Here we go. 
What can you tell me about Mrs. Haynes? Oh, yes, poor Mrs. Haynes. I called in at the hospital yesterday evening. Mm -hmm. They don't seem very hopeful. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, anything you know about her? Not a lot, really. Um, she's been a member of the club for, what, two, maybe two and a half years? No relatives, as far as I know. She's the sort of woman who would open the door to a stranger, would you say? Oh, no, definitely not. She's got rather a suspicious nature, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, let's face it, she can actually be very difficult. A lot of the old people here are very friendly with each other, popping into each other's houses and so on. But I don't think Mrs Haynes ever invited anyone back to her place. How did she get here to the club? We have a team of volunteer drivers. Someone would have collected her and then taken her back. Do you know who took her home this week? Angela, Mrs Newcomb. Mrs Newcomb. Right, thank you. Anything else I can help you with while I'm here? Well, there's the chairs. By the way, how are you making out with our Maureen? Hmm? Maureen? Two teas and a bacon sandwich. Imagine, Jack, please. Maureen Lawson, Detective Sergeant Lawson, the one with the long hair and the you know. Oh, Maureen. That's her name, is it? She's good news, as it happens. Mm, she's a good looker. I hope you don't find yourself tempted. What? Play footy with a junior officer? Oh, dear. Mullet would love that, wouldn't he? Eh? Yes. No, actually, Jim, I think I've lost the urge. You know, women. What's that? Growing up or growing old, you reckon? <coughs> yeah, well, you've had a rough old year. That was true. Oh, Christ, is that the time? Look, I'm off the court. See you. All right, see you. Hello. All right. Yeah. Hope I didn't get you into trouble last night with your boyfriend. Sorry? You know, getting you in late. No, no, everything was fine. You know, all the time that we were together, my wife never realised that she wasn't just married to me, she was also married to the job. Not that I didn't take advantage of it, you know, use it as an excuse. Just like all those blokes in the pub last night. The pub last night. Elliot. I knew it would come to me. Bernard bloody Elliot. Come on. Hello, Bernard. Haven't you got anything a bit more cheerful? Hello, oh, Mr. Frost. Nice to see you. Bloody liar. Is that your van over there? The blue one? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, the blue one. You haven't told Swansea that you've painted it, have you, little tinker? They've got it down as a white one. So have we. Oh, yes. Sorry. What were you doing in that house last night, Bernard? What house? Come on, Bernard. I know that it was you that phoned me because I recognised your voice. Not at first, I must admit. But then I'm not as bright as I once was. <laughs> Neither are you. Come on, you were turning it over, weren't you, Bernard? Certainly not. Oh, come on. The only way that you would have known about Mrs. Tutan Carmoon was that if you'd have been in the house. And you didn't go through the front door. You went through the window like I did. Now, come on, don't mess me about, Bernard. You know how irritable I can get. All right. I was in there seeing what I could find. And I found her, frightened the life out of me. Yeah, well, didn't do my laundry much good, I can tell you. What? Bernard, what is this? Where did that come from? I'll tell you where it came from. It came from a Mrs. Redgrave who was burgled three weeks ago. Now, listen, we've had quite a run on these burglaries. What I want to know is, are they down to you? Now, a simple yes or no will suffice. And this is Police Brutality Week, so think carefully. How long have you been in the burglary business? Is this not really? Oh, that's why I haven't given you a tug before. 
I had you down as a nine to five man. Well, things haven't been good. My daughter's getting married in a couple of months. Oh dear, well, you buggered that up, haven't you, Bernard? Should have thought of that before you went round robbing little old ladies. There was a chance of bail, I suppose. There's always a chance that England will beat Germany 6-0. I thought you'd be pleased. Well, let's face it, that improves this month's clear-up rate by about, what, 0.5%. And you're quite sure he wasn't involved in this assault on Mrs. Um, whatever her name is? Haynes. No, no, sir, no, no, it's not his style. Oh, by the way, sir, you were absolutely right. Did have a blue van. Desmond, it's your mother. You said you were going to phone me. Fat chance at that, I don't think. Where are you? Off on one of your fancy business trips, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. If your father were... <phone rings> oh, hold on, you'll have to wait. There's someone at the door. <laughs> Might even be you. <laughs> My lucky night. Shirley. Shirley Fisher? Yes, of course. Sorry, I was miles away. How are you? I'm fine. Do you? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Fine. How's the smoking? Oh, it's OK. Still got no confidence in it, though. <clears throat> Which way are you going? Oh. Oh, it's same as me. Right. <clears throat> well, did you ever get that new car? Oh, uh, I decided against it. I didn't really need it. How about you? Did you get a new washing machine? Mm. No. <laughs> Same thing, really. I got a season ticket to the late-night laundrette. You're looking after yourself, then? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I take baths and everything. You'd be amazed. No, it's OK. It still feels a bit strange, living on my own. Get used to it, eventually. Okay. Um, I go this way. Oh, oh right. It's really nice seeing you. Yes, yes, yes. You, you, you too. Bye then, Jack. Glad you're all right. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, um, maybe we could have a meal or something sometime if you're not, you know. That'd be very nice. Good. Well, I'll, um, I'll give you a ring. Say anything? Nothing I can make sense of. Who's that in there with her? Someone from the church, a Mrs. Newcomb. Well, look, there's no point in both of us staying here. Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, hang on. Newcomb. Say Newcomb, did you say? Yes. Angela Newcomb. She drove her home.
Mrs. Newcomb. She's old and she's lonely. And sometimes loneliness turns to bitterness. It comes like a cancer, really. It takes over. She'd be even lonelier if it wasn't for the likes of people like you. Oh, I don't do much. Just fetching and carrying, really. Not like some of them. Some of the helpers are wonderful, really wonderful, they do so much. And I don't mean people like me, people who don't have children or a family. I mean people who... You know what time it is, do you? Do you know what time it is? I'm sorry, John. The Medwins. We're supposed to be at the Medwins. <gasps> oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just about sick and tired of playing second fiddle to these lame dogs of yours. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Excuse me, sir. It was my fault, you see. I was asking Mr. Who are you? Uh, oh, John. I asked him. Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID, sir. Oh, I see. About Angela's old lady? Yes, that's right, sir. Oh, do you need to ask my wife any more questions? No, sir. As a matter of fact, I don't. Then we need not detain you, need we? No. Good night, Mrs. Newcomb. Good night, sir. You do know, don't you? You know exactly what you mean. Because every time it happens like this, every time there's anything important, every single... John Newcomb. See what you can find out about John Newcomb for me, will Who is he? He's the husband of one of the helpers down at St. Watsit, where the old lady went. Oh, uh, anything in particular? No, other than I don't like him. Oh, well, in that case, I'm sure we can find something to put him away for a year or two. Just find out about him for me, will you? <sighs> oh, I'm having some terrible nights lately. <sighs> Three hours and that's my lot. Well, last night, I thought, right, I'll have a nice early night. Nice drop of scotch. Get myself eight hours. What happens? Two o'clock this morning, I'm wide awake again. I suppose you were out in the town with the old fellow, was it? Yeah, we did, um... We did go out for a meal, yeah. yeah that's what I need, really. A bit of company. I've had an offer. Well, I made an offer. Hmm. Thing is, though... Hey, listen to me. Now, this is your fault, Sergeant. If you'd been a bloke, I wouldn't be going on like this. Frost. Good morning, Jack. Morning. You did it properly this time. He must be getting his hand in. Alice Ryder, 76. She's a widow. Got a son living in Denson. Name of Desmond. I'm trying to contact him. I borrowed her daily mirror yesterday afternoon, just before she went off to bingo. <laughs> Thursday's her bingo afternoon. She gets back about seven. About half nine, I knock on her door to give it back, but there's no answer. So I stick it in the letterbox. Well, uh, I'm going for my walk this morning, and it's still in there. That's funny, I think. So I knock on her door, and I still don't get no answer. So I, I, I let myself in. I've got a spare to her flat, she got one of mine just in case. Yeah. And, uh, oh. There she is. So, I, I'll phone you lot. Look, uh, would you would you fancy a cup of tea? No, thanks. I've had one, but go on, you go ahead. So she didn't have a security chain on the front door, then? She didn't have no chain. 
Oh, yeah, she's got one, all right. Brand new, too, by the looks of things. Stone me, I'm getting old. Do you know, I never noticed it. I, uh, I knew she was having one fitted like because she said her son was worried about all these burglars that have been going on. <laughs> yeah. Not worried enough to spend a bit of time with her, though, eh? Do any of them. Where's the pathologist? Been and gone. He'll phone you this afternoon with the time for the autopsy. Everything clean and tidy. Just like the other one. Oh, Look at that. 50 quid in her purse, nothing in the fridge. My mother was just the same after the old man went. Always putting something by for a rainy day. Rather die of cold than spend money on a decent sweater. Getting old and frightened. Something to look forward to, isn't it, Sergeant? What you're saying is there's every possibility we have a serial killer here in Denton. Well, if the first victim dies, and there's every chance she will, that's what we're saying, yes. We've got to tread very carefully on this one. The last thing we want is panic. Well, panic is what you're going to get, unless you can keep the press in check. I've been holding them off all morning. All we need to do is give the public our side of things, reduce the panic syndrome. I'll get in touch with social services, arrange to have some liaison work, have the usual notices and warnings put out and so on. What we need, sir, is one of your television appearances. Yes, I'll get on with that. I need to be kept properly informed on this one, Jack. No scribbled notes, up-to-the-minute information. Best of all, of course, a quick result. This is our number one priority. He's got to be caught before he kills again. Right, what have we got? Right, here we are. OK, quiet, please, everyone, listen. Let's have your concentration up here on this board. I want you to take a look at these pictures. Mrs Mary Haynes, age 77. Mrs Alice Ryder, age 76. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to show you the sort of man that we are dealing with. Right, now, he's done this twice. If we don't find him, but find him quick, he's going to do it again. Because a man who's capable of this sort of thing is a mental case. And he's not going to stop until someone stops him, right? Now, why these? Why these two old ladies in particular? Hmm? Does he attack at random? Or is there a link? You know, is there a common denominator? Well, let's think about it. What do we know about them? Well, they're both women, all right? They're both old ladies, they're both widowed, and they both live alone. And they both opened the door to someone they knew, someone they trusted. All right, now, apart from family and friends, there weren't too many of them about by all accounts. Who else? Who else would they open the door to that they knew that they trusted? That's what we want to know. Now, come on, let's have some ideas. Come on, think. Well, the doctor, home visitor. Social services, meals on wheels. Gas man, electricity. Or someone from the church, vicar or priest or someone. Good, good. Come on, anybody else? Any other ideas? No? Is that it? Right, well, there's a sign of the times for you. I asked you to give me a list of all the people they might trust, and not one of you mentioned a bloody policeman. All right, all right. Now, come on, let's get on with it. 
I want you to chase them all, anyone, anyone else that you can think of. Now, George, what about dry cleaners, laundrettes and that sort of thing? No, there's nothing at Gov, no. All right, keep at it, something might turn up. Any joy with the neighbours? No, Gov, deaf and dumb as usual. Oh, there is one thing, some kid reckons he saw a car. Dark blue saloon. Pretty sure it was a Vauxhall. A Vauxhall? Didn't we have a Vauxhall with the other old lady? A Vauxhall or a Ford? You asked me to check on Newcomb, Gov. Sorry, who? Newcomb, the husband of the woman who works at the old people's club. Oh, right, yes, and? He's an architect, no record, nothing known. Oh, bet you a pound to a penny, he knocks her about a bit, though. Anything else? There is one thing, Gov. We keep saying he, the killer. Why couldn't it be a woman? Wonderful, thank you. One of the hoses had uh, perished and come loose. Is that bad? No, no, not at all. I've tightened the clip for now, but the best thing you can do is to take it into your local garage and ask them to fit a new one. Are you all right, Mrs Newcomb? Yes, of course. Why do you ask that? Well, you just look like there's something bothering you. It's just that I'm running a bit late, that's all. I wanted to get home before my husband. He worries about me. <sighs> Off you go, then. Thanks again. Apart from my mother, there were two other messages on the machine. One at 8.15. The other at 9 o'clock. Take your time, Mr. Ryder. I'm all right now, thank you. Please. So, you were saying there were two other calls on the machine, one at 8.15 and the other at 9 o'clock. That means that your mother must have phoned you sometime between the intervening 45 minutes. Yes. They put the time of her death somewhere between 9 and 11 o'clock. What you're saying is that whoever she answered the door to is... is the one who attacked her. No, I'm not saying that definitely, so no. But it is a distinct possibility. She wouldn't answer the door to someone she didn't know. I was always... I was always very firm with her about that. I was... I don't suppose you brought the tape with you, did you, sir? No. no, I'm sorry. That's right. I'd like to borrow it, if I may. The sergeant here will go back with you. Thank you very much. That's all, sir. One more thing, Mr. Ryder. Where were you last night? Me? You suspect me? I'd be happy if I had anyone to suspect. It's just a question of elimination. That was in Newcastle. The Queensway Hotel. Here's the receipt. Thank you, sir. I'd like it back. I need it for my expenses claim. Right. Let's try it again. First doorbell. Oh, um, hold on, you'll have to wait. There's someone at the door. <laughs> Might even be you. This time I see her. Goes to the hall. Slow down, slow down. Remember, she's an old lady. There's the second doorbell. She gets to the door. She looks through the spy hole. Of course, she says something. She says something again, though. She's saying something else, but now she draws the first bolt. Then she draws the second bolt. She 
she takes off the chain, opens the lock, opens the door, and she says something to him. He says something to her. Says something else. She invites him in because then she closes the door. There it is. Comes along the hall. She leaves him in the hall. Picks up the receiver. And the tape runs out. Well. Definitely someone she knew. Definitely someone she wasn't afraid of. But we can't hear what she said at the door. Yeah. Play it again, play it again. This time, just the sounds of her doing the door, and as loud as you can, please. The chain. Sorry? There's no sound of the chain being taken off. Well done, Sergeant. Very good of you to spare me the time, Mr. Proctor. Well, it's nice to be of some use for a change. So then, what's it all about? When I spoke to you earlier, you said that you knew that Mrs. Ryder was having a chain fitted because her son was worried about her. Something like that, yeah. When did she tell you this? Oh, be about last Tuesday. No, Wednesday. I was taking her paper back and he rung up while I was there, checking to see if she'd done something about it, and I overheard like. So he was getting it fixed for her, was he? No, that's it, you see. That's what? That's what she was going on about. I mean, that's how I know. She was saying, don't bother. I'll get it done myself. Fat lot you care. That sort of thing, you know, the use largey bargey. Anyway, when she rang off, I said to her, I said, listen, if you want a chain fitted, I'll do it. No, thank you, she said. The bloke from the bingo's already offered. So I think, right, Ada, suit yourself. Bloke from the bingo? I think she meant one of the drivers. What drivers? Well, they lay on a little coach for the OAPs, picks them up and brings them home. Did she have a regular driver? I don't know. I've never seen him. I say him, but sometimes they have women drivers. Oh. So you don't go yourself, then? Bingo? <laughs> don't believe in gambling, mugs game. Besides, I never bloody win anything. Why did you ask her? Well, just one of the things you say, isn't it? Did you like her? Yeah, very nice. Has she got any ties? Divorce. Well, then. Well, the thing is, what I'm trying to say, I suppose, is that say I took her out for a meal or something, and I don't want her to get that wrong idea, you know? Shit. Mm. And then, yeah, what do you think? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen? You take her out, you have a bad couple of hours, you say goodbye and you never see her again. Go on. Risky. Yeah, do you want to give the old fella a ring? Tell him you're going to be late. No. No, that's all right. And by the way, it isn't my fella. I live with someone, but it isn't a fella. I see. I just didn't want you to get the wrong idea. All right, Gov? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah all right, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Right, I'll be there. Yeah, thanks, bye. Right, sorry about that. Where were we? Come on then, George. Off you go. <clears throat> well, the main bingo run contract mm -hmm. is with Super Swift coaches. 
but they subcontract the work out to other firms on a day-to-day -day basis. These are they. Now, each firm has a rotor of drivers for its various runs, so you wouldn't necessarily get the same driver each time. And not only that, most drivers are self-employed, so that the same driver could do work for different firms. Yeah, all right, look, skip the horses doovers, George. Get down to meat and veg, will you? Well, we've run all the names and duty rotors through the computer so that we could eliminate all those who definitely couldn't be in the frame when the attacks took place. Yeah. Now, we've come down to four possibilities. David Allen Hardwick, 38, married, two children. Thomas Riley, 41, married, no children. Patrick Robert O'Connell, 33, married, one teenage daughter. And Ronald William Gould, 35 and single. Now, I've still got a lot more checking to do. But apart from anything else, most drivers swap around with each other and they don't tell the governor. But anyway, as it stands at the moment, the only one who was definitely off duty at the time of both attacks is Mr. Gould. But he's a very cheery sort of bloke, by all accounts. All the old dears love him. Right. I'll be off now, then, Grant. How are you getting on with your new puzzle? Got eyes, haven't you? I'm going to change my book. <laughs> of course I won't. Don't you think you should hedge your bets a bit? No, I don't, Jim. I really fancy this one. You got nothing on him. Then I'll find something. This is our boy. I know it is. Mm, it's your famous gut reaction, is it? Yeah, well, that's guts, isn't it, Jim? You get ulcers, I get reactions. <sighs> yeah, well, let's hope you get a result as well. Look, if you really fancy him, don't blow it, eh, Jack? Don't pull him in until you've got good, solid evidence. I want every available man on him. I want him watched 24 hours a day. I want to know everything there is to know about him. I want his photograph shown to all his neighbours. Excuse me, Gov. If it's bad news, I don't want to hear it. It's the connection, Gov. Gould knowing the two old ladies because he takes them to the bingo. So? Only one of them was a member of the club. What are you talking about? They both had membership cards. They were in their handbags, the Mecca Bingo Club. Yes, but, Gov, uh, one of the membership cards ran out two years ago. Mrs. Haynes. She stopped going because of her arthritis. She went to the hospital. Okay. Yes. But how did she get there? Thank you. If you could... A woman in her condition. They would have sent an ambulance. No, not necessarily, my son. Because they have a team of volunteer drivers who help the ambulances out when they're too busy to pick up patients. I know, because I had a volunteer driver pick up my wife. Well? They don't keep a record of individual pickups. They get too many for that. All they can say is that one of the drivers who was on duty when Mrs. Haynes last attended for treatment was a Mr. R. W. Gould.
I've been feeding some details into the national computer. Oh, Constable, you know how I hate computers. And one way to catch criminals, and that's good old-fashioned police work. That means beating the hell out of some poor sod till he signs a fake confession. Oh, get one of them. I was looking for similarities, age of victim, method of assault. Oh, I know all that. Come on. Two years ago, in Plymouth, there were three identical killings. Old ladies living on their own, beaten to death. The first killing took place on the 26th of March. Mm -hmm. Same date as the attack on Mrs. Haynes. The third killing, the last, took place a month later. No one was ever arrested. Books are still open. They're sending the details down to us. There's an ant attached to this, I know there is. And Gould used to live in Ivy Bridge, which is 10 miles outside Plymouth. He moved here about 18 months ago. Lady, that one right then, sir. Where to? How about the police station? Detective Inspector Frost. I wonder if you could spare me five minutes of your time, please, sir. Oh, thank you very much, sir. She does love her milk and biscuits. Uh -huh. Well, we all have our funny little ways, don't we? Yeah, that's true. That's why I asked if you wouldn't mind coming back here. She gets very upset if I'm not back when I say I'll be. Silly old girl she is. My grand. As I was saying, sir, it's just a matter of me finding out as much as I can about Mrs. Haynes and Mrs. Ryder. Um, I understand that they were very fond of you, sir. Oh. They trusted you a great deal. And I was wondering if one of them might have said something that might, you know, just might help me with my inquiries. Well, of course. I'll be of any help I can, but I can't really mm. think that anything... When I said were... Mrs. Uh, Payne is still alive, of course. Yes. Mm. I've been in to see her a couple of times. Oh, really? Well, it's fine that the officer didn't mention anything. I've got an officer there 24 hours a day, just in case. Well, I didn't actually go in. I just wanted to see her. And I could see through the door that she was still unconscious. Oh, right. Mm. I'm hoping that she might be able to tell us something. Mm. But between you and me, I'm not holding my breath about it. It's very unlikely that she's going to make a recovery. Yes. So I understand. Well, to be frank with you, Mr Gould, if I can't get a positive identification on this one, I'm right up the creek. Oh. Mm. Well, very nice. Thank you very much, sir. Very nice. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to get a decent cup of tea in this job. As I understand it, you were one of the last people to see Mrs. Haynes alive, sir. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, yes. You were the one that drove her back from the Senior Citizens Club. No, not me, Inspector. Yes. One of my officers told me it was always you. Well, usually, yes, but this week it was Mrs. Newcomb. No, 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 no. Mr. Gould, they said Mr. Gould because... He's the only one that'll put up with her, they well, said. Well, she wasn't that bad, you know. She was quite a dear old lady, really. Is. Sorry. Oh, she is a dear old lady. She isn't dead yet, sir. Not clinically, anyway. 
I'll just take this up to Grant. Yes. Yeah, it's all right, sir. All right. Yes. She was, uh, in the loo. <laughs> How long have you lived with her? Oh, forever. Never thought of getting married, then? Well, when the right person comes along. Do they ever? Do they ever? Your parents still alive, are they? No, no, they, they died in a motoring accident. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it was a long time ago. I don't really remember them. I see your grand's a bit of a jigsaw puzzler. Oh, yes, it's amazing, really, what she can do by touch. These are not like normal pieces, though, are they, these jigsaw pieces? They're a bit thicker. I uh, make them, especially for her. Oh, yes. It's a hobby of mine. I've got a little workshop out the back. Well... I say workshop, it's at the end of the garage, really, but it's very well equipped, everything I need, really. Would you like to have a look? As I said, everything I need, really. Mm. Just lock the door and forget your troubles, eh? Yes. Yes, well, it's... Very impressive. Yes, very impressive. What's this? Oh, that's uh, a little intercom I rigged up so that I can uh, hear Gran if she needs me. Oh. Come on. What is it? I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you this, sir. Can you tell me where you were on the two nights in question? Oh, yes, I was here. Well, outside in the uh, garage, my grandmother can confirm that, of course. Yes, yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't think I need waste any more of your time. If you do think of anything... Yes, of course. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, there is one thing that occurs. Did you, by any chance, give one of your jigsaw puzzles to Mrs Haynes? Ah, yes, I did, actually. I gave them to several of my old ladies. They don't get many presents, some of these. Why do you ask? Mm -hmm. It's just that I found a piece of jigsaw down the side of her chair and it only registered because it was unusual, you know, it was a rather thick one. Ah. Well, that's cleared up another little mystery. That's the trouble with my job. You get suspicious of your own shadow. Oh, I see that you've got a chain fitted. No. Good solid one. Did you do that? Yes, months ago. Oh, I see. That reminds me. When you delivered your present to Mrs. Ryder, did she have the chain on the front door? It was Mrs. Haynes, uh, not Mrs. Ryder. Yes, of course it was. I'm sorry, yes. Ronald! As I... Ronald! Yes, sir. Uh, here I am, Gran. I said digestives! Digestives! Oh, sorry, I thought you said you... You're useless! Oh, you are useless! You always have been and you always will be. Can't do anything right, can you? There's only one word for you. Useless! <laughs> Actually, he was delivering for our bring and buy on Saturday. Well, there's a bit of bad luck. Anything I can do? No, no, I just wanted a quick word. I'm trying to piece together what happened the day Mrs. Haynes was attacked. Helps you out a lot, does he, Mr. Gould? Oh, yes. 
Well, like today, for instance, he must have made three or four trips loading and unloading. And he does some bits of decorating, helps out with the boiler, keeping it well stocked and so on. Sounds quite a little treasure. What people used to call a Christian before it became politically in... Sorry, I've just got to get that phone. Right. Sorry about that. Uh, there's always something that has to be done yesterday. I'm sure you find the same. Mm. It's that sort of world, isn't it, Vicar? Tell me something. Some of the clothes you get must be too old or dirty or even stained to sell. Verminous sometimes. We shove them straight into the boiler. Oh. Useful things, the old coke burning boiler. Consumed by flames. Gets rid of most things, eh, Vicar? Be it old clothes, verminous clothes, blood-stained clothes, even a body should the occasion arise. I'm sorry. I'll I tell you what, Vicar. How much is this jacket? All right, what have you got? You've got opportunity, you think you've got motive, and you've got damn all else. I've collated all known intelligence, which includes a psychiatric report, and it makes very interesting reading. All right, look. In that case, he might be. Stupid he is not. He'll have an answer for everything. You can bet your life on it. But it's all in those reports, Jim. Read it. Look, I'm tired and I want to go home. I'll read it first thing tomorrow. He's our man, Jim. I know he is. Go home, the pair of you. Yeah, all right. OK, here, by the way, what do you think of my new jacket? Very nice. Mm. Made in Czechoslovakia. Not surprised. £4.50. Drive a hard bargain, these checks. No, 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 no. Got it off the vicar. Oh, it's nice to see Mr. Mullet having some effect upon you. Mullet? Mullet, nothing. I've got a date. Thank you. Now I know why they call it happy hour. <laughs> anyway, cheers. Cheers. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Anyway, I've, um, I've booked a table at, uh, what's the name of it again? Um, Lorenzo's. Yeah, uh, Lorenzo's, as I said. Another recommendation. Oh, it's very good. Oh, it's, you've been there? Mm, once or twice. Oh. It's good then, is it? It's very good. Oh, good. It's an Italian restaurant. The owner's Spanish. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean that the owner's Spanish. Well, so they say, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still living in the same place? In the house? In the house, yes. Yeah, I had thought about moving, but um, I couldn't really get my mind to it. It's, well, I suppose, you know, I'm avoiding it, really. I mean, you know, the hassle. It's OK, it's, it's OK. What happened about... The... No, sorry. No, go on, whatever. No, honestly, No, no, I'm... no, no, yes, no, you said, go on. Go um, on. well, you said there was someone else. I just wondered what happened about it, the way you talked about her. Um, 
I'm sorry, you didn't say her name. Eileen. Eileen, um, I got the impression that you and she would... No, no, no. No, I haven't spoken to Eileen since Mary died, well, before even. Well, I suppose I should have done, really. I mean, that's what it was all about. I mean, if Mary hadn't been as ill as she was, I would have gone. I would have left her. But then when we found out she was as ill as that, that she was dying, and, well, when she died, um, somehow the thought of getting in touch with Eileen was wrong. And I don't know. I thought maybe she wouldn't want to know anymore anyway. Hey, what is this? The last time I took you out, I seem to remember that I bent your ear for three and a half hours. Then you don't need it all again. No, but I think you might. It's that obvious, is it? Wasn't meant as a criticism. Well, mm. let's have another one, eh? And then we'll. It's the old lady that was in hospital. She's just died. I thought you had a date. So did I. So did she. <laughs> Heard marry a copper, eh, Gov? Yeah. How did you know, anyway? It's all round the neck. Now, let's face it, Gunner. He's not going to come out of there. Like you say. He might be mad. But he's certainly not stupid. Well, I'll just have to give him a nudge then, won't I? Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Archer. It's Detective Inspector Frost. Do you remember I was here a couple of days ago? Um, well, what do you want? I'd like a quick word with Ronald, if I may. Oh, well, oh, well. I you better come in. Won't take a minute. He's in the garage. Oh, I see you've had a chain fitted. Get someone in, did you? He did it last week. Oh, you haven't had it fitted long, then? I just said, didn't I? Ronald? Perhaps he's gone out. Ah, he's there, all right. Got that machine of his on. Does that mean that he can't hear? <laughs> That's what it means, yes. Does he often have the machine on? Of course he has it on. Why else do you think he goes out there? Him in his blooming workshop. Spends a lot of time out there, does he? I think he'd live out there, given half a chance. Mm. Maybe he's got a young lady out there. Him? <laughs> Still, not very nice for you, is it? Little old lady in here on her own. You could have an accident, couldn't you? I mean, you could trip over something. He wouldn't know anything about it. Strange, really. He doesn't strike me as that sort. What do you 
recommend that salt? Well, everyone I know speaks very highly of it. Says he's very caring. Yes? Why do you spend all this time out there, then? Do you know what I think? I think he uses that machine as an excuse. I think he can hear me half the time. He just wants to have me suffer. Why would he want that? Oh, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about, believe me. Ronald! Ronald, come in here. I want you. Him and his vicar and his old ladies and his bingo club. Oh, yes, can't do enough for them, can he? But who has to sit here twiddling her thumbs night after night? Oh, you're here, are you? What's happening? Why are you bothering my gran? She's not well. She's an old lady. It was you I came to see, actually, Mr. Cool. Why? What do you want? I just came to tell you that I think she's going to be all right. Mrs. Haynes. Well, how do you mean, all right? Well, she's recovered consciousness. The doctor says I'll be able to talk to her first thing tomorrow. And as I know that you've been very worried about her, I thought that I'd just drop by and uh, let you know. Oh. Yes. Sorry if I butted in. It's all right, I'll find my own way out. Oh, no, there was just one thing. Do you remember that I told you I found a piece of a jigsaw puzzle down the side of Mrs. Haynes's chair? And you told me that you'd given Mrs. Haynes a jigsaw puzzle as a present. Do you remember telling me that, Mr. Gould? Yes, yes, of course I do. Well, when you gave that little present to Mrs. Haynes, would that have been on the Thursday? What's he talking about? It's all right, Gran, it's all right. You see, I found some wrapping paper in the bin and... Yes, it would have been, actually, when I called to collect her. That's odd. Didn't find any trace of a jigsaw puzzle, except this, you know, this one piece. No, you wouldn't have found it because I took it back. You took it back? Why would you do that? Well, to tell you the truth, we had a little tiff. Oh, you had a little tiff. What do you mean? You had a row, did you? No, no, not a row. No, we just... Oh, well, to be honest with you, she turned on me. Turned on you? Oh, how's that? I don't want to talk about it, if you don't mind. We just had a slight disagreement. You That's lost all. your temper, did you? That's right, Gran. <laughs> I lost my temper. Yeah, always did have a temper, this one. Careful now, Gran. <laughs> You'll get me into trouble. There's no fear now. No, don't you worry, Mr. Gould, no. After what your grandmother's told me here tonight, it's a good job you're not on my list. <laughs> How do you mean? What has she told you tonight? <laughs> Well, you told me that you were in your workshop on both nights in question. Mm -hmm. And you said that your grandmother could confirm it. Well, I mean, I realise now that we've only got your word on that. I mean, you could have popped out for half an hour, couldn't you? Huh? As I say, you know, as you're not on my list, it's all right. Did you tell me that both your parents had died in a car crash? Well, he is that what he told you? Were they not, then, Mrs. Archer? <laughs> she wasn't married. Oh, she gave him his father's name. <laughs> and then she dumped him on me when he was three months old. Why would you tell me they were killed in a car, then, sir? Because he's ashamed of it. He lies. He always has lied. Come on now, Gran. Couldn't have been very easy for you, Mrs. Archer, could it? We'd a middle-aged woman on her own, bringing up a baby like that. For all the thanks you get. Firm with him, will you? He was nothing but trouble. Didn't spare the rod, eh? He needed it. Oh. <laughs> Didn't I hear that you tried to set fire to your school, Ronald? Now, why did you do that? Hey, why would he do that, Mrs Archer? You know what he said? No? His favourite teacher bowled him out in front of the class, made him look small and it upset him. I never said that. It was them. It was them that said that. Them? Who was them, Ronald? What do you mean by them? What do you mean by them, Mrs. Archer? That report they did of him, that woman he saw. Grand! What woman? The psychiatrist? The one that said constantly seeking the approbation of his elders? Was that the one? I wonder what she meant by that, Ronald. When's your mother's birthday? Well, I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, yes, you do. Don't lie! Grand! March the 26th. Right? That's right. Yes, March, March the 26th. On March the 26th, Mrs. Haynes was attacked. 
two years ago in Plymouth. An old lady was murdered on March the 26th. What do you make of that, Ronald? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Do I? Do you miss her, do you? Your mum? I must say, she looks very nice. She was a tart! No. Don't say that, Graham. Don't say that. Well, what else was she? Dirty little tart who only had one thing on her mind. Ow! This interview is now concluded at 10.15 a.m. Mr. Gould, if you'd like to go with the sergeant here, she'll look after you. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Frost. Well, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Bright. What a coincidence. Doing your weekly shop then, are you, Mr. Frost? Yes, that's right, Mr. Bright. I'm doing my shopping. How do you mean coincidence? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it was just that I was thinking. Just then, I was just thinking. You're absolutely right, you know, about my garden. It is too much for me, so I've decided to sell up and move. Oh. Oh, we'd hate to think we were instrumental in... Well, you're selling the car just because the ashtray was full, <laughs> wouldn't we, Miriam? Oh, we would. Yes, we would. Yeah, no, it's not just that. There are other considerations as well. Oh, the house being full of memories, you mean? Yes, yes, there is that. But I was thinking more about the subsidence. Subsidence? What subsidence? Oh, the whole road is sinking. I'm surprised your surveyor didn't tell you about it. Oh, yeah. Well, I won't keep you good people. I'll be off. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>